So you saw that killer workflow on the thumbnail and probably be like, huh, again with this lame, boring clickbait, man. But I can assure you, it's not a clickbait. Actually, it's a legit workflow used by many pro artists in the industry and they call it this exact title. But the sad part is, they don't use Blender. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit. For this workflow, they use ZBrush and ZWrap to wrap those faces around the mesh and then bake it onto the mesh. So I was wondering how to skip ZBrush and do it all in Blender. Then I came up with this method that might be actually easier than ZWrap. As always, if you want to support the channel or download the practice files and real-time videos, you can check out my Gumroad and Patreon page. Link in the description. Before we start, you need to have few scan maps like diffuse, normals, or displacement maps that you can find on the internet. I think the best one is texture xyz that i'm pretty sure it's in the industry standard by now since i've seen many pro artists use their maps but basically anything you find on the internet should work if you don't want to use textures at all you have to manually scope all that little pores and wrinkles on the face which requires a bit of a skill and ton of brushes let's go first bring your character make sure you unwrap the uvs properly if you don't know how you can find the tutorials on youtube because i don't want to make this video longer than it should be select your character Shift D to duplicate and escape to place it back. We're gonna keep one of them for the last. Select one of them and go to shading tab. Shift H to hide everything else. Add a new material. Shift A and add image texture. Open the albedo slash diffuse map then connect it to the base color. You will probably see these huge lips on the skin. That's cause our map is not matched with our UV. To fix that go to UV editing tab. Press tab to go to edit mode. Press A to select all. Then S to scale up. On the right window hold Z and go to material preview. If the UVs are stretched like mine, press S, then X or Y to stretch it on this axis until our UVs is fairly matched with our face. Turn off show overlays to see better. Enable proportional editing by pressing O. In the edit mode, select the faces and drag it until the UVs is matched with the image. Remember to look at the right side as well. While proportional editing is on and you're dragging the faces, you can scale up or down the circle of the proportional editing by scrolling up or down on the mouse. The bigger the circle is, more more faces will move with your mouse, so keep it at a reasonable size. Keep doing that as much as you can to get a clean matched UVs. The most important ones you need to keep focusing on is the lips, eyes and the nose. You can use the relax tool to smooth out the UVs, use the grab tool as well. In the shading tab, duplicate image texture and open the displacement map. Shift A and add a displacement node. Connect the displacement map to height and displacement to displacement. Now you should have the skin details on the face. If it's too intense, lower the scale just a bit. Now go back to the UV editing and start fixing the UVs again. With the displacement map enabled, we can see the details better. Look for any stretched parts where you think the skin pores or details are stretched, especially on the cheeks and the parts close to the nose and try to fix that in the UVs. Also don't forget to use the relax tool for the parts you think is necessary. It might be one of the most important parts of our workflow so really take your time on this one before taking the next step. The ears area is a bit tricky. It might not be fully matched with our model but try your best to get it close as possible. We're gonna fix the problems later on.
Okay, we're done with this one. Go to file, export, obj, enable selection only, and export. Remember, we made a copy of our model at the beginning of the video. That one has the default UVs that we didn't ruin. Select the original model, go to shading, add a new material, shift A and add image texture. Ignore these other nodes I got here, you just have to have the principal shader. Click on new, put the generated type on UV grid and increase the resolution. We made this one to see our UVs with checkerboard to fix any issues with our UVs. Connect the image texture to base color. Now when you go to material preview, we got the checkerboard on the face. If you have the node wrangler add-on enabled while selecting the image texture, press ctrl T. In the mapping, increase the scale. You see on the nose and the mouth area, the checkerboard is a bit bigger and stretched. That causes problem in our texturing. If yours is perfect, skip the next part. If not, go to UV editing. In the edit mode, press A to select all. Choose the relax tool and start relaxing the UVs until it gets better and gets closer to the size of other grids on the face. Also use the grab tool and drag out the UVs to get the squares a bit smaller. It is still not perfect, we can work more on it, but I'm gonna move on for now. Before we get to the next part, to clear out any confusion, we got two models now. One with the stretch UVs that we match with our skin maps, and the one with the good UVs that we've been working on just now. In this part, we're going to bake the face maps from the first model to the second model. Select the one with the good UV, go to file, and export as obj, enable selection only, and export. Okay, for this one, you need to download this small free app named xnormal. I put the link in the description. They use this in this workflow as well. Once you installed it, open it and you'll see this. It looks like an app from 90s or something. Not gonna lie, it's kinda ugly, but I don't care, since the software itself is great. While you're in high definition meshes, right click on this one and click on add meshes. Now open the model that we match with our face maps, now right click again and click on the base texture to bake. Then open the diffuse or albedo map, select the low definition meshes, right click again and add meshes. This time open the second model with the good UVs. Now go to baking option, turn off everything on the list and only enable bake base texture. Increase the size to 4k or 8k, I went too far with it, don't do it like me. You can put in this number, but your PC will explode on the next step trust me. So keep it at a reasonable size, but lower the size meaning less details on the skin. Increase the anti-aliasing and put these numbers on edge padding and bucket size. I forgot to rename it, but you name it diffuse or albedo, cause it's gonna be our base color for the face. Now generate the maps. Few warning pops up, just ignore them, it's nothing. Now wait a few minutes to render, the higher the size is, the more time it needs to render. Once done, you should have something like this. Close it. Back to high definition mesh, right click on this one and base texture to bake. This time, select the other maps like displacement map. Go back to baking option and name it displacement, then generate the map. Once done, in the high definition, do the same thing and add other maps like normals, roughness or utility, whatever you have. Rename and generate over and over, until we got all of our maps baked and ready to go. Back in blender, while selecting our model, in the shading tab, shift A and add image texture. Open the new diffuse or albedo map that we just baked, then connected to the base color. On another image texture, open the displacement map, shift A and add displacement. Connect the displacement map to height and displacement to displacement. Go to material preview and as you can see we have our maps back perfectly. Change the scale if the details are too intense. You can use this model on any software or game engine you want, but we still got few maps left. If you have a specular or roughness map, skip to the next part. But if you're using texture XYZ maps like me, you probably have utility map. This map contains different channels that we need to extend
drag using Photoshop. The utility map also used for other things that they explained on their site if you're interested. Fire up Photoshop, open the utility map and remember open the baked version from X normal, not the raw version. On the bottom right besides the layer, we got channels. Click on it and you'll see these RGB channels. Click on blue, go to image, mode, click on gray scale and press ok. Go to file and save as jpg. Back in blender, get a copy of any image texture node you have and open the new map we just saved. Connect it to the specular. Shift A and add invert. Connect the map to invert and invert to roughness. Change the invert a bit until the reflection are decent. Now you see we got really nice pores and wrinkles on the face. This looks good even in Eevee. But there's one thing missing. You've probably heard of subsurface scattering, right? If you put your hands against the sun or any light, you see something like this. It's one of the most important things in the skin shader. If you don't use subsurface scattering, the skin looks kinda dead and lifeless. Yeah, you can just add a red color to subsurface color and increase the subsurface. But that just gives the subsurface to the whole mesh. We don't want that. In reality, some of the parts have more subsurface than the rest, like the nose and ears. Why? Cause it's thinner, meaning more lights comes through it. So what do we do here? I'm gonna tell you at the end. For now, let's fix our maps. You see only face area is correct, but the face textures kept repeating all over the mesh and we have to fix that. Select your model, lower the subdivision of your character to 0 or 1. This helps reducing the lag while painting. In the shading tab, select your albedo map, then go to texture paint tab. Go to view, disable display texture paint UV so we only see our map. Press N to bring up the menu. In the tool tab, scroll down and in the texture section, click on new and put the mapping on stencil. Then go to texture properties and open the albedo map. Now when you move your mouse on the screen, you see this. To fix the aspect ratio, click on image aspect. By holding right click, you can move it. Holding shift right click, you can scale up or down the stencil. Control and right click, you can rotate it. We only want the face to be on the head and not on the neck or other places. So choose an area where it only have flat skin, like cheeks, and start painting the skin over those areas. Just take your time and clear out those useless faces around the head. Also don't forget to remove the eyebrows and hair, cause we don't want that either. Once done, we're left with only one face. On the right menu, switch up to displacement map. And again, go to texture, click on new, and in the texture properties, open the displacement map. And do the exact same thing as the albedo. Just remove the other faces. Remember to do that for other maps, like the specular or any other map you have. I'm gonna skip this part, since you already know what to do with it. And at the end, make sure you go to image and save. If you already have translucency map, it looks something like this. Then I skip this part. But if you don't, you have to to do this. I added blood and makeup. It's not related to our tutorial, so ignore it. In the shading tab, shift A and add ambient occlusion. Again, make sure node wrangler add-on is enabled. Now by holding control shift, click on ambient occlusion two times. In the render properties, choose cycles. Hold Z on the screen and go to render mode. Now we can see our ambient occlusion. Turn on inside and only local. I'm gonna leave it as it is, but if yours is too bright, decrease the distance in the ambient occlusion until you got a subtle shadow on the nose and ears. Now we gotta bake it into the image. Click on new, increase the resolution and click on ok. Press n and in the image tab put the color space on linear. Then name it luminance. Shift a and add image texture. Click on the image icon on the left and search for luminance to bring it here. Now it's important that you have your object and image texture selected. Then in the render properties scroll down and in the bake section put the bake type on emit. Then click on bake and wait a few minutes. Now we got the map in our luminance image texture. You can delete the ambient occlusion now because it's useless. Shift A and add mix RGB. Drop it between our albedo and base color. Put a dark red color on the color too. Now connect the luminance to the factor. Shift A and add invert. Drop it between the luminance and mix RGB. Then connect the mix RGB to subsurface color. Now this is gonna be our setup for the subsurface. As you can see it's way too intense. No one has a face like that. So shift A and add color ramp. Drop it between the invert and mix RGB. Now by dragging the left handle to the right we can control the intensity of the color. It is still too intense 
intense on the nose and ears so we have to tone down the white as well click on the white handle and click on the color then give it a bit of gray color now select the color ramp shift d to duplicate and drop it at the bottom connect the n-word to the color ramp and color ramp to subsurface this is the important one you can now control the intensity of the subsurface scattering using this color ramp it is still too translucent so i drag the left handle to the right even more i'm using ev right now but remember if you're preparing to render it in cycles tone down the subsurface even more because subsurface is usually much stronger in cycles than ev you just have to mess around with the both mix rgbs to get the results you think is more realistic As you can see right now, it's barely have any subsurface in Eevee, but if you switch up to Cycles, it works really nice. Okay, that was basically it. You can go back and change the settings however you want, but I think it came out decent. If you have any question or suggestion, leave it in the comment section. Also, if you find this video helpful, like and sub would really help the channel grow. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.